sometimes our image of farming is tinted with nostalgia. But science and technology plays a major role in modern agriculture, especially in the area of genetics. They're out there, off the beaten track, down lonely roads. These facilities are hard to find and access is highly restricted. Why? Because they're an important link in the U.S. food supply. The location, the fencing, the carefully filtered air, all designed to protect pigs. This is a biosecure area because whether you're a pork producer or a consumer, the last thing you want here is a virus. Virtual Genetics works with a major genetic company in the U.S. We house the boars, uh, feed, take care of them, harvest and process the semen, and then distribute it to the pork producers here in the Eastern Corn Belt. Birchwood supplies semen for many of the sows east of the Mississippi. That's why they're so focused on biosecurity. For instance, in this facility, you can see the perimeter fence that surrounds all the way around the buildings themselves. That not only is a, a chain link fence above, but it goes three feet below to uh, uh, stop any rodents from digging and in, uh, in entering the facility. We are uh, very stringent on the biosecurity and, and keeping uh, our animals as healthy as possible for our customers and pork producers. Want the fastest racehorse? The hardiest cattle? The finest wool? Selective breeding has long been used to achieve these goals. Years ago, our grandfathers and great-grandfathers would take the pigs to fairs and have them show and compete against a, uh, each other. And that evolved into finding the best boar and mating it to my best sow to, uh, uh, to better my neighbor down the road. The first step was identifying favorable genetic traits. The next step was to spread those traits over as large a group as possible. AI is artificial insemination of the females. And one of the reasons it was a major game changer in, the, in pork production, because it took our best boars that we had and was able to spread them over so many more animals. For instance, a natural boar in, in a natural mating circumstance, he would sire somewhere around 600 to 700 animals. With AI, that number increases by tenfold up to uh, six to 7,000. So the question all boars ask is, how do I get picked for that team? Some of the major genetic companies today will measure individual intake of the boars as they grow from birth to market weight and compare that to how much feed they're consuming to get that growth. And the ones who grow the fastest and eat the least are the ones that sort out the top. Farmers pay for results. They're counting on getting the right stuff. In the lab, they're receiving the raw collection and evaluating the semen. So the finished product has at least 2.5 billion viable cells in each dose that the pork producer gets. And by viable, I mean those are active cells that's able to fertilize. We make routes twice a week to most farms. As long as the farmer maintains the semen at a, a consistent temperature of 62 degrees, uh, the shelf life of the semen is good for seven days. I am on contract to produce a specific genetic cross. I take pig A and cross it with pig B. But to do that, I, there is a company that produces females called gilts, you know, young females that haven't had a litter yet and haven't been bred. They have a known genetic construction, and I buy the semen, I buy the male side from another company that specializes in collecting that from boars. We've been working with Chuck and his family for multiple years. Our role is providing semen on a weekly basis via direct delivery. What comes to me in a bag is a specific genetic construction, so when I put the two together, 
I produce a pig that is of known genetic origin, which is very important because when I go to sell that animal, the members of the industry that want to buy it want to know what that genetic construction is. I'll be seeing Chuck soon, and uh, we do have a, a higher indexing line that's available that uh, I'd want to visit with Chuck about and see if he has interest in that. A big part of what I do is traveling the eastern plains of rural America. I think I have the best job in the world. I tell my wife I get to meet people and look at pigs. My wife thinks I'm weird. Many times with Chuck and other customers, uh, I will look at their South performance records. And uh, one of the things that uh, I provide as a role is we'll, uh, we'll troubleshoot in areas of their South performance productivity and find areas that, that can be improved in and often congratulate them in areas where they're excelling. Increased efficiency isn't the only goal of genetics. Consumer preferences are a major factor as well. Over time, the consumer wanted a leaner meat, and we was able to drastically, dramatically reduce the amount of fat involved in the meat, which made a healthier product for the consumer. Genetics can even allow Ohio farmers to tailor their products for the specific tastes of overseas consumers. One of my contracts is with uh, Indiana Packers out in Indiana. Indiana Packers is owned by Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi is obviously a Japanese company, so a lot of the product is ending up in the Japanese market. Some of the foreign markets want a different color of meat. Uh, they want some different uh, characteristics of the, uh, the product itself. And we know how to produce that form by developing the genetic lines that would uh, enhance those traits. Over the last 40 years, genetic science has helped farmers make impressive gains in efficiency. In the 1970s, the pigs were marketed around 220 pounds, taking over 800 pounds of feed to get them there. Today, the pigs are marketed at 280 pounds, which is 60 more pounds of pork, and taking less than 700 pounds to get there. So the finished products, we have a greener pig. We're making more meat with less corn. It gives me a great sense of satisfaction to be able to find areas where they can improve and makes their bottom line better, makes them more productive, and they're able to pass their farm on into the next generation. I get a lot of appreciation and thanks from the pork producers, but you know what? They've never bought me a steak. 